Welcome to St. John's Church online. We're glad to have you in worship with us today. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and and blessed blessed be be his kingdom, kingdom, now now and forever. forever. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Hear what our Lord Jesus Christ says. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments depend all the law and the prophets. A collect for the ninth Sunday after Pentecost. Almighty and everlasting God, you are always more ready to hear than we to pray and to give more than we either desire or deserve. Pour down upon us the abundance of your mercy, forgiving us those things of which our conscience is afraid and giving us those good things for which we are not worthy to ask, except through the merits and mediation of Jesus Christ, our Savior, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Our first reading today comes from the book of Ephesians, beginning in the third chapter at the 14th verse. For this reason, I bow my knees before the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named, that according to the riches of his glory, he may grant you to be strengthened with power through his spirit in your inner being, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith that you, being rooted and grounded in love, may have strength to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth and length and height and depth, and to know the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. Now to him who is able to do far more abundantly than all that we ask or think according to the power at work within us, to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations, forever and ever. Amen. The word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be be to God. A reading of Psalm 114. When Israel went out from Egypt, the house of Jacob from a people of strange language, Judah became his sanctuary, Israel his dominion. The sea looked and fled, Jordan turned back, the mountains skipped like rams, the hills like lambs. What ails you, O sea, that you flee? O Jordan, that you turn back, O mountains, that you skip like rams, O hills, like lambs. Tremble, O O earth, at the presence of the Lord, at the presence of the God of Jacob, who turns the rock into a pool of water, the flint into a spring of water. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen.
Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St. Mark. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Immediately, Jesus made his disciples get into the boat and go before him to the other side, to Bethsaida, while he dismissed the crowd. And after he had taken leave of them, he went up on the mountain to pray. And when evening came, the boat was out on the sea, and he was alone on the land. And he saw that they were making headway painfully, for the wind was against them. And about the fourth watch of the night, he came to them walking on the sea. He meant to pass by them, but when they saw him walking on the sea, they thought it was a ghost and cried out, for they all saw him and were terrified. But immediately he spoke to them and said, Take heart, it is I. Do not be afraid. And he got into the boat with them, and the wind ceased. And they were utterly astounded, for they did not understand about the loaves, but their hearts were hardened. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Will you please pray with me? Now to him who is able to do far more abundantly than all that we ask or think, according to the power at work within us, to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations, forever and ever. Amen. Well, our passage today that I will be focusing on comes from the book of Ephesians. After spending some time on some missionary journeys, establishing some churches throughout the region, uh, which included a three-year stint in the city of Ephesus, establishing the church there that Paul now writes to in this book, Paul finds himself in Rome under house arrest. So he's got lots of time on his hands. What do you do with lots of time? Well, you pick up your pen and you start writing. And so we have evidence in the book of Acts and in uh, the letters themselves, including the book of Ephesians, that suggest that Ephesians and Philippians and Colossians and Philemon, or Philemon, however you want to pronounce it, were all written during this time of imprisonment that Paul was under in Rome, this time of house arrest. This is a prolific time for, for Paul, and he used it to encourage the churches, to encourage the people that he loved. Some of these letters have a more personal kind of bent to them. Philippians is a, a letter full of joy to the, to the first church that Paul founded, and then the letter to Philemon, which is a, a personal letter to a friend of his about another individual. And then the other letters are a little more instructional. We have Colossians and, and Ephesians, which we're looking at today, where Paul focuses both on right doctrine and right practice. Both of these books are split about evenly and, and follow a, a same basic kind of form, where first Paul talks about what it means to have right belief and what those right beliefs are. We call that the fancy word is orthodoxy. And then he shifts to the second half of the book and he, he, he focuses on what it means to put those right beliefs into practice in the right way. The, the fancy word for that is orthopraxy. So orthodoxy, orthopraxy, right doctrine, right practice. Well, our passage today comes sort of at the hinge in Ephesians between those two sections. Chapters 1 through 3 are focused on right belief. Chapters 4 through 6 are focused on right practice, how to put those beliefs into practice the right way. And so here we are uh, in between at the end of chapter 3, starting at verse 14, we have this personal, powerful prayer that concludes what he's just taught and that then empowers the church to take that belief and to apply it practically. Let me show you what I mean. Look at verse 20. Paul writes as an empowerment for the church. He says, Now to him who is able to do far more abundantly than all that we ask or think, according to the power that's at work within us. He's saying there's, there's a power that's at work within us that comes from a God who is able to do far more than we can ever even think to ask. And look at verse 21. We see how he concludes the 
the section that came before. Verse 21, to him, to this God, be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations forever and ever. If you haven't yet, I encourage you to open up your Bibles and follow along with us. We're going to be taking a look here at this hinge moment, this incredible prayer that Paul prays, this moment of doxology, of of glory, of praise of God that we read about in verses 14 through 21. And we're going to use verse 21 sort of to be our, our guide as we examine this passage. So first, to him be glory. Now there's two aspects of glory. There's this broad base of glory, and then there's this singular focus. Picture a mountain, a triangle. There's this broad base that it all rises up to, to one singular point. Well, there's this broad base of glory. Everything in the created world was made to give God glory because every creation screams with the glory of its creator, right? The Mona Lisa is praised for showing the mastery of da Vinci. The Sistine Chapel points us to the extraordinary abilities of Michelangelo. Before I worked for the church, some of you may know that I was uh, a scientist of sorts. I worked in a lab. So science has always had a a special sort of interest to me. And it's amazing to me the advances that science has made. Did you know that we now have microscopes that can see half the width of one hydrogen atom, which is the smallest of all the elements? And guess what we see when we look at that? We see order. We see structure. We see organization. It's beautiful. It's amazing. And so beautiful, in fact, that it hangs on the walls of the lab where this microscope is housed. It's artwork. On the other end of the spectrum, the completely other end of the spectrum, we also have telescopes that allow us to see over 450 light years away. Now, I don't know if you deal in light years regularly, so let me give you a little uh, scale of reference. One light year is six trillion miles. That should probably help you. Six trillion is much more quantifiable than a light year. And what do we see? Even at this great distance, what do we see? We see creation. We see formation. We see solar systems that are being formed right on the very edge of what we can detect. You see, God is, is glorious. And, and he created with purpose everything that we have ever been able to see from the very smallest and closest to the farthest away. His creation drips with his glory. It reveals his mastery, his extraordinary abilities, and it does so in ways that leave us astounded, that are beyond our ability to fathom. See, that's what it means to have this sort of base of glory. It's foundational. It's a part of everything. To him be glory is perhaps the most succinct summary of what this book is all about. This is the purpose of Scripture. It's not a collections of writings by men and about men. It's a collections of writings by God and about God. And this is the story of God's glory and our response to it. You see, we were created to glorify and to sing the praise, not of ourselves, but, but of our Creator. And so that's the broad sort of foundation of glory that permeates everything And all of that glory of creation, it points upward to one singular peak, uh, excuse me, one singular peak. Um, We have to recognize that sometimes the distance between us who give God glory and God who is deserving of that glory is so great that uh, there can be some that's lost in translation, right? We can sometimes perceive that God is somewhat unreal to us. It's one thing to stand in the crowd of a concert of your favorite band and to hoop and holler and revel in the glory of their presence and your presence with them, right? At a concert, that's easy to do. It's easy to put on the colors of your favorite team, to go sit in the stands and and to revel in the glory of what is hopefully their victory as you sit and stand in the presence of your favorite team. But, But things change when we get to the scale of all of creation. It's so great that it it can be difficult to feel and to experience God in that same way. The truth is, for 
For one, if we don't believe in God, the truth is we're not looking up for him anyway. We're looking down. We compare ourselves with everyone and everything else. We try to capture some of that glory that's supposed to be for him for ourselves. That's what sin does. It tells us that we deserve to receive glory. We forget that we were actually made to give glory away. We feel most like ourselves when we participate in something that's bigger than just us. But we forget about that. And if we do believe and trust in God, well, sometimes we we don't always do that perfectly, right? And so the irony is that he who deserves all of the glory is often the one who is most and easiest forgotten. That is what Paul is writing to combat. That is what Paul is addressing here in the first half of Ephesians. In verses 8 and 9 of chapter 3, Paul writes, To me, though I am the very least of all the saints, this grace was given to preach to the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ and to bring to light for everyone what is the plan of the mystery hidden for ages in God who created all things. Notice Paul acknowledges sort of a twofold purpose to his ministry. One, to preach Christ to the Gentiles. He says that all people are reconciled to God through Christ. The Gentiles are fellow heirs, members of the same body, Paul writes in verse 6, that they are partakers of the promise in Christ Jesus through his gospel. You see, the love of God is for all. It is revealed to all in Christ Jesus. How does that take place? It's through a particular person, and it's at work in a particular place. So to him be glory, and now to him be glory in the church. The church is the place where this action, this revelation is to occur. Paul writes in uh, verse 10 through 12 of chapter 3, Through the church, the manifold wisdom of God might now be made known according to the eternal purpose of God that is realized in Christ Jesus, in whom we have boldness and access through our faith in him. Paul's connecting all the dots for us. He's he's concluding what he's been teaching so far. He says, God's eternal purpose is for the church to reveal the wisdom of God that has been realized in Jesus Christ through his death and through his resurrection. You see, it's not just that Jesus was plan A. Friends, you were plan A. This was God's eternal purpose all along, that the church would be used to reveal the manifold wisdom of God. And so the church is the place where that action is to occur. And Jesus is the main actor. To him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus. The church is the location. Jesus is the focus of everyone's attention. I was listening to a sermon by uh, the preacher John Piper. He had this great analogy, so I'm going to unabashedly steal it now. He said, The church is the hospital, and Jesus is the surgeon whom the Father gave to fix and to heal and to restore. So that everyone who leaves that hospital, they leave healed, saying that it's at the hands of Jesus that that healing has occurred. So it's in the church, the place that this healing occurs occurs, but it's by the work of Jesus Christ. It's by the work of one man. It's at his hands that we are healed. And Paul writes that this miracle is to go on forever and ever. To him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations forever and ever. Well, church, this is the conviction that fuels our mission Verse 16, Paul writes, According to the riches of his glory, he may grant you to be strengthened with power through his spirit in your inner being, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. You see, we as a church and and we as individuals, we can never get beyond this singular fact. It is Christ alone who gives us strength. It's his work on the cross that vanquished sin and death. It's his act of redemption, of restoration and reconciliation that causes us to be reconciled, to be restored, to be redeemed. You see, our faith is our trust in him. 
And through it, we are, as Paul writes, rooted and grounded in love. And we are given the strength to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth and length and height and depth, and to know with certainty the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge. Did you catch that? To know with certainty that which can't be known. The love of Christ that surpasses knowledge. And from it, we are filled with all the fullness of God, empowered by him who is able to do far more abundantly than all that we ask or think. This prayer that Paul writes is a a powerful summary of what he's taught so far, and it's a powerful declaration of how we are to live our lives. And with Paul, I say, to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations forever and ever. Amen. Let us confess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Ghost of the Virgin Mary, and was made man, and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again according to the scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sitteth on the right hand of the Father. And he shall come again with glory to judge both the quick and the dead, whose kingdom shall have no end. And I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Lord and giver of life, who proceedeth from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spake by the prophets. And I believe one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins. And I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray for the church and for the world. Almighty and ever-living God, we are taught by your holy word to offer prayers and supplications and to give thanks for all people. We humbly ask you mercifully to receive our prayers. Inspire continually the universal church with the spirit of truth, unity, and concord. Grant that all who confess your holy name may agree in the truth of your holy word and live in unity and godly love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray that you will lead the nations of the world in the way of righteousness and so guide and direct their leaders, especially President Biden, Governor McMaster, and Mayor Myers Urban, that your people may enjoy the blessings of freedom and peace. Grant that our leaders may impartially administer justice, uphold integrity and truth, restrain wickedness and vice, and protect true religion and virtue. And we commend to thy gracious care and keeping all those who serve the common good, especially our military, those in law enforcement, first responders, health care workers, and all those go, who go into harm's way to protect us, to defend us, and to rescue us from danger. And we pray especially for Joel Billings, Hartwell Bryant, T.J. Carpenter, Jonathan Carroll, Alan Kopp, Caleb Fleck, Chloe Fleck, Colin Fleck, Matt Harvey, Brandon Johnson, Daniel Lamb, Andrew McCarrier, Peter McCann, Paul Miller, Tom Miller, Mike Shaw, Michael Sims, John Taft, Ben Thornton, Stephen Turner, Ricky Tyner, and Peter Warren. Lord, in your mercy, 
Prosper, we pray, all those who proclaim the gospel of your kingdom throughout the world. Give grace, Heavenly Father, to all bishops, priests, and deacons, and especially to your servants, Archbishop Foley Beach and Bishop Mark Lawrence, that by their life and teaching they may proclaim your true and life-giving word and rightly and duly administer your holy sacraments. And to all your people give your heavenly grace, especially to this congregation, that re reverent and obedient hearts we may hear and receive your holy word and serve you in holiness and righteousness all the days of our lives. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. we ask you in your goodness, O Lord, to comfort and sustain all who in this transitory life are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity, especially Ann Biner, Jack Cochran, Joanne Fisher, Lila Gary, Oscar Holland, Peggy Kenny, Billy McCrary, Diane Morris, Shot Paget, Asa Skinner, Mark Taylor, Sheila Tetley, and Jake Williams. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We remember before you all your servants who have departed this life in your faith and fear especially Emily Elizabeth Greiser, granddaughter of the very Reverend Ron Greiser, that your will for them may be fulfilled. And we ask you to give us grace to follow the good examples of St. John and all your saints, that we may share with them in your heavenly kingdom. Lord, in your mercy. Your heavenly Father, grant these our prayers for the sake of Jesus Christ, our only mediator and advocate who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us humbly confess our sins to Almighty God. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, judge of all men, we acknowledge and bewail our manifold sins and wickedness, which we from time to time most grievously have committed, by thought, word, and deed, against thy divine majesty, provoking most justly thy wrath and indignation against us. We do earnestly repent and are heartily sorry for these our misdoings. The remembrance of them is grievous unto us. The burden of them is intolerable. Have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father, for thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, Forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may ever hereafter serve and please thee in newness of life, to the honor and glory of thy name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who in his great mercy has promised forgiveness of sins to all those who sincerely repent and with true faith turn to him, have mercy upon you. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear the word of God to all who truly turn to him. Come unto me, all who travail and are heavy laden, and I will refresh you. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, to the end that all that believe in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. This is a true saying and worthy of all men to be received that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. If any man sins, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. He is the propitiation for our sins, and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. <clears throat> the peace of the Lord be always with you, and, and also with you. With you. Well, once again, welcome. We are glad to have you in worship with us today. Uh, we have just a couple of announcements for you. It's getting to the end of the month, which means your newsletters are in the mail. You should be receiving them uh, in the next few days, week or so. If you don't receive our newsletter, get in touch with Beth at the church office. We'll be happy to add you um, to that list, especially as we get into the fall. And we are excited to have some more things uh, popping up and going than we have had uh, in the previous year, at least. 
so if that's of interest to you, get in touch with Beth, and she can get you that information. Um, as always, we want to remind you about our worship schedule here on Sunday mornings. We are back at it, so we are worshiping uh, at 9 a.m. outside, and that service continues, and we'll continue to be outside in um, the pavilion uh, in the back um, off of the fellowship hall, uh, dressed for the weather, and uh, we hope that you can join us there at 9 a.m. outside, and then at 11 a.m. we have a service here inside the church as well. And so we encourage you, as you are able, we recognize that not everyone is able to join us uh, in person on Sunday, but if you are able, uh, we do ask that you would come and worship in person with us this Sunday, 9 a.m. or 11 a.m. We have some birthdays and some anniversaries to celebrate. Happy birthday to Helen Ann Irvin, to Andrea McKenzie, Chapel Jones and Charlotte Anderson, to Gailey Salibi and Ben Nasso, to Meredith Anderson, to Katie Blakelock, Alan Kopp Jr., and to Caroline Winsel. And last but not least, happy birthday to Alan Kopp Sr. And happy anniversary this week to Hartwell and Heather Bryant, to Tina and Johnny DeBerry, and to Beth and Mike Hopewell. Please join us as our service continues with our concluding prayers. Lord Jesus Christ, you stretched out your arms of love on the hard wood of the cross that everyone might come within the reach of your saving embrace. So clothe us in your spirit that we, reaching forth our hands in love, may bring those who do not know you to the knowledge and love of you for the honor of your name. Amen. And now I ask as you are able to join us in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. <clears throat> Most merciful Father, Send down upon the Anglican Diocese of South Carolina your heavenly blessing. Fill us with your Holy Spirit, that in the election of a bishop coadjutor, we might conduct our work in love and faith and in purity of heart. We pray that you would send to us a shepherd of your own choosing, a faithful servant of your gospel to hold up the weak, heal the sick, bind up the broken, and seek the lost. We ask all this in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And now together we offer the general thanksgiving. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for your immeasurable love and the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts, we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplications to you. And you have promised through your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will grant their requests. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth and in the age to come life everlasting. Amen. Amen. Now the peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. alleluia.